Thank you for joining us. And on today's, for the next 15 minutes, we have Mr. Paul Cruz in the hot seat. He is number five on the AVP list. Welcome. Thank you. Let's get right into it, Paul, because 15 minutes goes by fast. Now, politics is in your family. And um, prior to you, predominantly, your family mostly supported MAP or were involved in MAP. Now, what I want to ask you is, what are the ideologies of AVP, or should I say, the vision of AVP that you agree more so than over MAP? Yeah, exactly. As you just mentioned, I come from a family that's very close related to the MAP. Um, but the decision of every citizen of Aruba and of every person is a decision of themselves. Um, I've seen a lot of the political scenarios on Aruba. And uh, I must tell you that uh, what attracted me most to the AVP uh, was the professionalism, uh, the dynamism of uh, this organization, uh, the future uh, forward-looking vision of this political party, political organization, uh, which is a very traditional organization. It comes from a tradition, a long tradition, but uh, it's still renewing, uh, putting also new people on the list, uh, bringing f ideas forward that actually are out-of-the-box ideas uh, and very visionary. It's a very visionary party. I felt comfortable immediately after, you know, um, being part of this organization. And uh, it, it, it's, those are actually most, uh, the most important things that attract me most to the, to the AVP party. So you would say AVP is more innovative in a sense? Of course, more inno innovative and uh, more dynamic. You see a lot of changes being uh, being done, uh, not only in the organization it's itself, mm -hmm. uh, but renewing, still renewing all the time, all right. and bringing professionals in, you know, from all different sectors. And that are the, those are important factors uh, uh, of a great party, of a good organization. Okay. Now, there's something very interesting about you, Paul. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're 36 years old. And um, you were the youngest president of the parliament in the history of Aruba. Now, why do you think you got this position? You know, what was uh, it about your resume? And your I believe it's a hard work. It's uh, because of hard work. Uh, my resume. I'm a political scientist. Uh, I graduated graduated in uh, 2002 at the University of Amsterdam in political science. Um, I've lived in Holland for six years. After that, coming to Aruba and worked for the government for six years as a political advisor um, mm -hmm. at the Department of Foreign Affairs. And after that, after that I got into politics. Very good results. Last elections, uh, right. I was number eight on the AVP list, 1,500 something votes. Uh, very good for a first time on the, on the list. Um, after the elections, as you know, I was the vice president of parliament. I was a member of parliament and vice president of parliament. And uh, with the resignation of Mr. Lee then, mm -hmm. I became suddenly in a public meeting. Uh, I took the chair of uh, President of Parliament, uh, Chairman of Parliament or Speaker of the House, if you may call it, as in uh, American terms. Um, so uh, I believe uh, the realization of becoming the President of Parliament is mostly uh, thankful to uh, the hard work, uh, okay. to a lot of uh, focus and that I have had in my life um, after putting politics as uh, something I wanted to do for my country, you know, uh, uh, this function come as, uh, as a result of all, all of that. Um, I'm very thankful for and, and honored of, uh, for being the president of Parliament for the last three and a half years. Uh, very distinguished um, function. I feel, I feel in Parliament today again, <laughs> I feel at home. Um, but I must tell you, there, are, there were great moments uh, as President of Parliament and, of course, challenges also. To, now, to now, speaking of which, for four years um, as the President of the Parliament, throughout your journey, was there any one thing that you would change in that journey of sitting right there as the President of the Parliament? You know, there are uh, great challenges uh, in front of us. We, are, we have a young Parliament still. 27 years of uh, Stin Stats Party, we have our own parliament. So there are some challenges, of course, uh, that we're not there yet as a mature parliament. Um, there are several things that we would like still to change. Uh, we have, Can you name them? You know, um, we have uh, tried, for example, to bring more transparency okay. uh, through the television channel. Um, nowadays, you can watch your representative in parliament represent you in public debates. 
uh, how they bring about their arguments, how they prepare themselves for legislations. So actually people can judge today how do their representative really represent them there. Live. Uh, what's the level right. you know, of the debate they're, they're having? Uh, are the arguments to the point and on which we're discussing? Uh, are, are, they bringing, are, are they bringing stuff in into the discussion that are actually not part of the whole discussion? Uh, you know, and that's a more transparent way of um, keeping people on what's going on in Parliament. Uh, another, let, let's say what, what I would have changed uh, of what I, I would like to, to see uh, changing still in Parliament is the level of the discussion. This is something, uh, you know, we are working hard on that. Uh, we've tried, in this sense, I've tried to always respect uh, the opponent, uh, the, the political opponents also, because if you want to get respect, you have to give respect. Right. And uh, that's something I, I'm always uh, striving for, is the level of the debate in Parliament. That's uh, something inherent, you know, mm -hmm. at, the, at the Parliament. It's something, uh, you, you, are, you have this, this honorable position and you do not represent yourself. You represent the people out there and you should um, bring your arguments and present yourself in a way that is honorable also. So you want to transition it into more respectful, eliminate the intensity of the arguments, the drama, the confrontations, basically for viewers not to sit there and watch and laugh. You want it to be exactly. professional. Yeah, of course, because uh, for 90% of the meetings, I must say uh, there are good meetings, good level meetings, but that 10%, uh, which uh, sometimes can go wrong, get also all the publicity. And that's, uh, I believe, not the, the correct way uh, to, to transmit to our people right. the work that's being, that are being done in Parliament. There are a lot of serious work being done in Parliament. Uh, you know, we have these commissions mm -hmm. uh, that, that do the pre-work before the debate, debate public debate. And uh, those uh, works have to also get emphasized. And uh, that's something I do not see yet. Uh, in Parliament, that the positive part of the job of Parliament is being exposed out there. Okay. So. Now, um, what I want to get to is, is you mentioned, you just mentioned this, you were a driving force in getting Parliament on TV. How do you see the future of Aruba when it comes to technology? How do you think that will transition? Because you wanted um, to kind of evolve uh, the Parliament onto digital, digitally. Talk about where do you see technology going on this island? You know, uh, it, technology is innovating every day, uh, as is Parliament also. The process of the digitaliz digitalization of Parliament is something that did not start uh, under my presidency, but started just before that. And uh, it's finishing, actually, it's still developing. What we want to do in Parliament is uh, the paperless work. We're working a lot today, um, almost all, all members of Parliament, uh, do they have the iPads or they work on their, you know, on their phones and uh, they have their computers that they work on? Um, that's the digi digitalization we want to work to. Um, every member of parliament today, for example, received their invitation for meetings uh, through a uh, digital system. Not that they have to bring them to their home anymore or uh, be hard copies. Uh, th those are things that um, also, you know, you know, innovate parliament in its works process. That's very important. But uh, that's most important that uh, for the people, uh, Parliament become, become more transparent. Mm -hmm. It's for the people uh, to understand what they really work, what they really uh, the, 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 the job of Parliament is in our Constitution. It's the control of the government. It's uh, the people there representing the community. It's, uh, you know, um, debating on, on issues that concern our people. And, how do you make that more transparent to the people is by putting those things, for example, online, putting them on the website, www.parlamento.ew, right. uh, bringing them to television. So um, people can become more um, known to what's going on in Parliament, uh, have more um, insights mm -hmm. of, of what the work is actually of a member of Parliament, of a representative. Now, for the next term, I'd like you to discuss your political agenda. What is, what is Paul Cruz's vision um, if your party is elected? What would you like to change? 
You know, uh, we are having a very positive campaign uh, in this uh, 2013 elections. The, the next few days to go uh, for the election 2013, uh, I must say a very uh, positive campaign. Um, we're looking forward for very positive results also. Uh, the people are reacting in a very positive way to the whole organization, the whole party. Right. And that's what we feel also. And in the case that the AVP wins the election, mm -hmm. and I say in the case AVP wins the election on, 20, on the 27th of September, uh, we have uh, discussed this with the party. The party approached me, the leader of the party approached me uh, to become a uh, member of the new cabinet, uh, to consider becoming a new member of the new cabinet uh, for 2013 2017. Uh, this is something we are discussing at the moment. And I must say, you know, um, there is a lot of work uh, to be done. We have done a lot. On Aruba, uh, but what we have to do at this moment is continue uh, the investment we're starting. What we have done, we have uh, laid down uh, the foundation right. to create progress. Uh, we have come from uh, decrease uh, a fall of the economy uh, from minus 15 percent to a projected growth in 2013 for in between two and three percent. So in four years time, you have to have an economic shift on the island. And that enthusiasm, that animal, that positivism, we, we should uh, bank on that. We should continue on that. We should uh, work on the foundation laid for progress. We should continue on that. Ainda falta. Ainda falta. That's part of the of the Ainda falta. Uh, you know, uh, 32 schools uh, being reconstructed, renovated in in four years uh, in, in the last four years. Um, 21 barrios being renovated, giving, right. giving the work back to the people. Uh, it's not an easy job. It's uh, it's a hard work. And what we should do in the next four years, and that is also part of the ideas that I'm bringing forward, uh, is. Uh, con continuing this kind of investment, continuing these small investments in the several barrios and, and concentrating also on um, making people feeling a little bit more proud of themselves, uh, making people uh, feel like leaders in our community. Um, I'm, very co I'm very convinced of the strength and uh, the, of the urban people. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a person who thinks a lot that uh, personal development, human development, is a very crucial factor into a nation development. If we can convince every citizen on the island uh, that they can be a better person for their community, mm -hmm. uh, convince the youth, inspire them to become uh, winners in life instead of you know hanging around and not uh, putting uh, goals in front of them, uh, we should create a better society, a better community. But we, as political leaders, should do that. We should give the example. We should uh, use the opportunities we have uh, through the media, uh, through our Facebook, through our social media, but through interviews also, uh, to try to give the message out there to everyone that uh, follows the, the developments on Aruba um, that you are a better person. You can be a better person for your island. Uh, we have a great island. We have uh, a lot of uh, strong people on Aruba, of course, we have our challenges, daily challenges, you know, financial challenges, familiar challenges, but um, think positive, you know, uh, become a, a better person uh, in your life. And uh, that is a message that I'm trying to bring forward, not only as a campaign message in 2030, but as a, as a message after campaign also, after 20, the 27th of September, I mm -hmm. believe that message has to go through in, in the person's life. I think that is a very good note to end up on. Thank you so much, Paul, for coming today and Thank all the success much. to you. Thank, Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And please tune in for our next edition of One on One, and you will get to see who is in the hot seat for that day. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you.